Good evening, everyone. Today is uh, Tuesday, 3-24-2020. I'm going to start the lecture for tonight. We're going to go through uh, functions. Um, so the material I have posted already, and um, we're going to go with the lecture, uh, starting with the uh, difference between the global variables and local variables. Um, after discussing the difference between global and local variables, we're going to discuss the scope of the function because when you're inside a function and the uh, local variables that are defined, and uh, normally they are being uh, they're being um, used locally and then the outside of it is globally. We will go through examples on those one as well. So let me go with the difference between um global variables and local variables and to demonstrate i'm going to use uh show you this function global variable versus um local variables which you have uh, the pdf file and um inside that pdf file basically i'm showing you the full scripts as well as um as well as um the examples for it. So in this script, what we are learning is how to uh, start uh, scripting with the first line and indicating what interpreter I'm using. In this case, um, bin bash is my interpreter and it's installed in the bin directory. So I'm using the shebang assemble which is a pound bang that's called shebang in Unix. And then that one tells me to find slash bin bash as my environment. Then I just have like some comments with pound site uh, on the second line and third line saying a script name, what's the name of the script and what it does, the purpose of the script. So after uh, having these comments and explaining it, then I write, uh, prints each arguments. Uh, actually, print each argument is a continuation of that line. So the first thing that I do is assign dollar sign one, which is passed from the command line as argument, first argument of this script to arg one. And then I'm uh, writing uh, a bunch of echo statement to say where I am in the script. That way, every time we print out this information, it will indicate where you are at, at one, at one line or what uh, part of this, whether you're outside of the function, you're inside of the function, you're in the global area of the program where you're. So right now, this statement is outside in the main program. And then I start the function usage, which uh, basically uh, is going to check for the number of arguments passed on and if the number of argument is passed on is less than zero, this function will be called. I, I don't have that uh, uh, number of arguments here on where it is passed on. Later on on the script, I'm doing a comparison. Uh, first, you have to define the function, then later on you use it. And right here, I call the, the function based on the number of argument is passed. Uh, it is called, if the number of argument is less than one, this pound dollar sign, I'm sorry, dollar sign pound uh, is the number of argument that's passed to this script. So if that number is uh, less than one, then it give a usage which calls that function. Otherwise it's gonna do some other functions. So if the number of argument is uh, less than one, which is uh, just a script name without any argument, then it's gonna call this usage function and it's gonna produce this uh, syntax saying that you need dollar sign zero in this case is the base name, which is the name of the script. So you don't have to say the name of the script. You say dollar sign zero, the system automatically knows that user defined variables or versus system defined. Dollar sign zero is a system defined variable and dollar sign one is a system defined variable. Dollar sign arg one is a user defined variable. So if, if I'm just uh, declaring those ones, then 
it will be different. So at this time, I'm trying to um, call that function, and if that function um, uh, is provided properly with the argument, number of argument I'm expecting, and then if it is at least one argument, then it's gonna uh, call this function, one args, and it does something with that one args. It is um, the one org function, it sets the value locally. If you see this variable called local arg1 is equal to 100, that means that within the scope of this function one arg, which is from this brace, starting brace to the end of brace, this uh, local arg1 is every time you refer to that one, it will have a value of 100. Outside of that one, the scope of this uh, arg1 will be lost because I'm defining it with variable local. So that means that this will be initially set to 100 inside of this script. And then outside of it, if I'm using arg1 and I'm assigning dollar sign one to it, whatever the parameter were passed, at that time it will print that value. So now, um, let's say I'm admitting student as they come in. So um, if I make a little bit pause because I'm just admitting other students or maybe reading the chat if anybody's communicating with me. So at this time, function multi args is the second function that it uh, takes um, uh, multiple arguments. And then this one also set the value of uh, local arc one to 200 rather than 100. So when I'm um, inside the multi arcs, the value of arc one will pr uh, print 200. And then the value of um, arc two will be, um, arc one will be 200 inside this function. Uh, I'm sorry, 200 inside this function and on the one arc would be 100. So, and then once I'm outside of the uh, scope of the function, I, I'm back to the main global area. I need to see the value of these uh, arrays and uh, values passed. So uh, inside of um, the script, when you call a script, uh, if you pass only one argument to it, that would be assigned to dollar sign one. Second argument would be assigned to dollar sign two. Third argument would be assigned to um, dollar sign uh, three, uh, and so on. And then dollar sign at is the array of all lists. So if there's three argument, dollar sign at will have a value of uh, one, two, three, if uh, one and two and three were passed to it. At the same time, dollar sign at and dollar sign star are pointing to the same number of uh, arguments that are passed. So whether you use dollar sign at as an array or dollar sign star meaning everything which is passed on, that is the same. Dollar sign pound is the number of argument. Dollar sign one, two, three is for each number of argument that are passed in. One for one, two for two, and so on. And we will go through the examples you will see. So at this time, um, after I'm getting out of the loop, uh, I mean the functions, and then I did the main, inside the main, I check for the number of arguments passed. If the number of arguments is passed only one, then uh, it's gonna just print whatever uh, the value of dollar sign one was passed. So it is gonna call one arc. If it is more than one, then it's gonna call, um, uh, multi arcs and then in this case you see this f else statement this is what this uh, f statement is useful um you're comparing the uh, dollar sign pound if it's one call the function usage if it's uh, i'm sorry if it's less than one call the function usage otherwise call the function one argument or uh, else f one argument and then else if all fails uh, call the multi arcs which is more than one argument. So in this case, I'm also showing you example of it here, like one local and global variables. So at this time, when, when I'm just giving no arguments to it, it gives me the output of, okay, there was no argument to dollar sign one, no argument to dollar sign at an array, therefore um, it has to give a usage. So outside of this one and inside the programs, there was no argument passed. Now it's gonna give a usage. 
It says dollar sign zero was the name of the script. It says dollar sign zero, and then it requires at least one argument, as an example, or uh, more, more than one argument. Dar arg one, arg two, arg sub n. Whatever number of arguments you want to pass on, you do that one. So now this time I'm using uh, one argument when one argument is passed. At this time, I'm going to say the name of the script argument is just one. This time it found the um, you know, one argument, so it calls the function one arc, the one uh, since the argument is uh, at least one. Now it is gonna have to print what I entered. It says you entered one, but inside one argument function, I set the one uh, arc one to value of 100. So right here, when I'm inside of that function, I'm getting a value of 100 because that one was defined locally. That's local versus global. Once I am out of that function, I'm in the scope of the other function. You can see all done with the scope of one argument function. At this time, arc one is not 100 anymore because is going to come to the outside of the program, which is the global area. And at the, as a result, org1 is what I passed into the script. So that's how, and then the uh, add array, because I provided one argument, is going to say um, is equal one. So ne next example is when two arguments are passed. Uh, one and two is passed. Notice at this time, the function one is not called because it's more than one argument. So it comes to the multi function. In this case, it's going to come in, it prints out uh, on the global area one and two. Those are what uh, I entered as input right here. So it prints out those two, and then it has to come into uh, the multi arcs functions. When it comes to multi arc functions, at this time, arc one is equal one because that's what I passed. And then at arc one and two has an array of it. You entered one and then you entered two. But the value of uh, uh, the arc one locally, I'm setting it to 200. So therefore, arc one is equal to inside. Because if you look at the syntax, it, I print out these one first before I change it to um, arg1 is equal to 200. And, and there, let me go to the multi arc. Let me check on the waiting room. There's more than a few people. Jonathan. Okay, that's good. So, um, multi arcs, when we are doing the multi arcs, <coughs> notice I print that one, what was passed first. I have not changed the global variable. That's why you get the value first. Now, when I let's uh, change the arc one locally to 200, at this time it becomes locally. Since I use the word local, that means that it's only defined within local. So if I go back to the result of that script to check what I'm passing on, uh, one and two. This is the example that we were looking at earlier. So coming back here, notice that it prints one and two first. Then it says the value 200, now arg1 is equal to 200 because I'm, I'm inside the scope of the function multi arcs. And now I'm uh, all done with the scope of multi arcs. So if I print out arg1, it's going to not be 200 anymore because uh, it is outside, outside in the global area of the program. So whatever I passed on is going to print out the one. So arg1 was, instead of being 200, it's equal one. And then at uh, is uh, one and two. Similar for one, two, three, if I uh, pass more than one argument, you can see now it becomes more clear that arg1 is passed on as one, and then this is what you entered, one, two, three. And then inside multi uh, args, it prints one, two, three first, 
then it's going to say, now I set it locally to 200. Once I got out of the scope of that function, which is right here, and then I uh, print out uh, app and arg1. Arg1 is not anymore uh, 200 because I'm on the global area section. And similar to this example, now I'm passing more arguments so it becomes more clear. And uh, notice that uh, dollar sign at as many argument as you passed on here, it's pointing to that, those values. And one uh, is always dollar sign one. Dollar sign one is there, dollar sign two is uh, two, dollar sign three is three, and dollar sign four is number four, and dollar sign five is uh, uh, number five. But dollar sign star uh, means everything here, and dollar sign at means all of that, all of those five numbers. Uh, so all, all five arguments in this case. And then, um, so when I make the call, you can see it prints out all those five because we have a for statement there. And then I'm inside multi arcs. It's still that locally it has to have a value of uh, 200. Notice that it's gonna be 200 because locally the scope is always 200. Outside of it, once I'm out of that multi arc, it's gonna be the value that I passed on. One is gonna be the first argument, two is second and third is third argument and so on. And then at and the star is pointing to everything. Okay, so then function global area, if I use the numbers or the string, doesn't matter. But it is on the example, you can see it's more clear. As when I use the number one for the arg one or dollar sign one, the arg one is pointing to one and then at is pointing to one and then you entered one and then uh, locally because one argument was passed, the value of arg one is calling the function one arg and inside one arc is a uh, hundred, a hundred. And then uh, uh, at, outside of it, it becomes one and one because there's only one argument is passed. In this case, number one uh, as the argument. When one and two is passed, notice that at this time I'm using the multi arc rather, uh, multi arc function rather than one arc because more than one argument is passed. So one and two is printing one and two and then um, inside multi arc function, I'm using similar uh, concept. Okay. And then um, for multi arc, the locally, the value of arc was set to um, 200. And then uh, outside of it is uh, there, um, back to one and uh, whatever I was passing it. So now I'm uh, using example one, two, three. You can see that the numbers are printed, but since it's multi-arc, uh, the value locally for arc one, which is the first argument is 200 again. Now, by giving these multiple uh, examples, I made sure that you understand uh, what is dollar sign arc one is pointing to, what's dollar sign arc two, dollar sign arc three, and so on. And then at the same time, what is um, that, uh, array at array or this uh, dollar sign star means the same thing. They're both pointing to the all uh, parameters that are passed on. And then dollar sign pound, remember when we were checking saying that the um, dollar number of argument is less than one. So dollar sign pound is how many argument are passed. If one and two is passed, the number of argument would be two. If one and two and three will be passed, then the number of arguments is pointing to three. We will, we will go through example on that one as well so you understand. Dollar sign question mark or um, variables that are saying that uh, the status of the function. If it is non-zero, all the function has to return a value. A value is either zero or non-zero. If it is zero, it means it successfully uh, completed that command or that script or that function. If it's non-zero, it is not successful. Whether it's one or 127 or minus one, that's non-zero. That means the script or a command or function did not return successfully. A function always perform a task and that, uh, that function returns a value. That value has to be either successful or failure. 
So in the case of a script that you write or a built-in function you use, there's always a, a dollar sign a question mark for bash and corn shell as sh. They're all uh, pointing to dollar sign uh, question mark. Uh, on C shell or TC shell, it's called a dollar sign status. If you look at that dollar sign status on C shell, you would know if that one was zero, then then it means successfully completed. If it's non-zero, it's not successfully completed. So it's good to know these system variables. I'm having another topic that we define like uh, user defined variables versus system defined variables. System defined variables are normally a dollar sign something, like a dollar sign, dollar sign point to the, your process ID. Dollar sign uh, path maybe is your system path. Dollar sign LD library path would be uh, your uh, library um, path. And dollar sign uh, maybe a Java um, a home would be your Java home. And uh, Oracle is ID is that pointing to the Oracle instance ID and so on. A lot of those variables that you point to and that uh, have a system defined variable, they're normally an uppercase. Some of those ones are set in etc profile or etc.bashrc or uh, customization uh, configuration file dot login dot logout or any dot uh, profiles dot env whatever you call it dot vimrc or something uh, that you're uh, setting those ones and then there's user defined variables that are normally in lower case variables like arc one that you use in a variable you set it to a value and then you can unset it there was two commands that we used on uh, unix uh, normally you should be familiar with what with both of them one of them was env which i'm going to give you an example after this env and the other one is print env env and print env is basically similar versus set set is showing you both a uh, um, global variable and, as well as local variable. ENV and print ENV are only showing you um, global variables, system defined variables. And then there's set ENV also on, uh, on um, C shell and TC shell for uh, whatever you do print ENV, if you wanna print it and if you wanna set the variable, you use set ENV. Uh, equivalent to set env and bash and corn shell and sh uh, actually bash and corn shell they're uh, similar you use that word export uh, export syntax for bash is different than the burn shell the burn shell you have to run it with two commands for example let's say you set your terminal to 100 uh, you say vt100 you say term is equal vt100 semicolon export term. That way you set it. But on um, bash and corn shell, you could just do it in one line. You say export uh, term is equal vt100. And on a C shell or TC shell, you say set the NV a space a term a space not equal a space and then um, vt100. I'll show you an example after this also. But I wanted to discuss this one before we jump into that. Let me finish this uh, example and then we go to the next one. And so function global area, at this time I'm uh, providing like more than uh, uh, about 10 arguments. So you can see that it doesn't matter how many arguments I pass, the system knows that dollar sign at or dollar sign star is uh, having an array of all those arguments. So that's why at is an array uh, of list. Uh, that list is one through 10 with some uh, uh, string for numbers. And then it prints out whatever I passed on exactly. So I'm uh, going through the for statement and I say for i and n at array and then print i and then therefore you have all of that. Arc one is equal one in this case Again, uh, since I'm inside multi arguments, uh, the value of org one has to be 200 um, somewhere. Let me see where it is coming as 200 uh, when I'm uh, inside the function. So 
and the first argument is locally to, yeah, right here. The value of argument is set to 200, arg one, and then as soon as I go, uh, get out of the scope of multi-arg, now arg one is back to one, because that's global variable. So this, this explain um, that one, I'm going to show you this in um, actually CentOS um, uh, or Ubuntu here. Let me just uh, get into, everybody could see my uh, terminal, correct? Uh, let me just uh, go back to chat. I'm gonna stop sharing for a second. And can you put uh, on chat that you see my screen? Okay, great. So everybody sees my screen. Now I'm gonna do share the screen again. Let me see if any participation is waiting. Okay, everybody's here, that's good. Um, I'm gonna share the screen again. And okay. Okay, so on here, I'm inside um, this functions. I have written a number of uh, script for a demonstration for you guys so you understand how to write functions and everything. One of the script was called uh, the one that we did uh, just now, function um, local global the other search. So I'm gonna just do a VI on that file quickly and um, explain. Let me just do this uh, function underscore local or global data search. Okay, so I'm gonna go to line one by pressing escape and then shift colon number one. It takes me in a VI into line one. And uh, you can see this is script. Uh, the nice thing about this one versus the Word document, this is all in a very nice format and colors because I uh, set up my environment to have this kind of um, color and based on what I'm doing at uh, what point. So R1 is equal dollar sign one, which means it's coming for whatever argument. And then here I'm uh, outside. This is outside of the function global area. And then right here, function usage uh, is just a function. If you don't call this function, this uh, is not even uh, like uh, it's de declared. The system doesn't know anything about it. And it's not gonna complain. Some, some systems like Python and other programming language, if you define a function and you don't use it, uh, sometimes it, you will see some sort of a, a, a warning or some error saying that uh, you de de declare this variable or this function, but you never used it. But um, the way uh, shell programming is, uh, is almost like the functional programming. You, uh, because you could write your function here, once you define your function, then you can use it later. If I just call, uh, say F, uh, like uh, call the function usage here, let's say for some reason I just say, come in and say usage, right away is the system is gonna just have a problem because it doesn't know what this usage is. It's not gonna go down and find it for me. In C programming language, you could write your main and then later on, wherever you write it, on the top, maybe you do uh, some function prototyping, which you define the prototype, and then later on you declare it. Or on Python, you could write the function and then uh, use it as, as you go. And then uh, here in Bash, you have to define it first, later on you use it. So this one is just giving you a usage. Remember this dollar sign zero is pointing to the name of the program. In this case, the name of the program is function local uh, global arc one uh, dollar search, and then um, um, that's how it's gonna print out. So if it, the program name was example one dollar search, it would say uh, example one dollar search followed by dollar sign one. And since there's more examples, I'm just giving you more example here. 
how to uh, pass on arguments. And function one org is going to set the local variable 100 here. We already went through and then dollar sign at array is just printing. Notice that I'm using here escape. So I could uh, just uh, print out a dollar sign followed by at and similar here. If I just want to follow a certain word like dollar, then I have to escape the dollar. And then similar here. So here I'm using a for statement. Remember the for statement, if I have 10 arguments, it goes through this uh, 10 argument because this is an array of list. Whatever argument was passed, it is in this array, but it's a list. And then it goes through that array of list and it's gonna print each one of them one. You entered arc, arc one, arc is, uh, in this case is my uh, variable. Every time it just goes through the list of arguments and then it prints it. And then here in this one, I'm setting variable 200. So, and then here the usage, I'm comparing if it's less than one, call usage if it's greater, uh, equal to uh, one, exactly one argument passed, call this one argument function. If it's more, more than one, then just do that one. Since I don't have another part, this else means more than one because I'm not comparing it anything else. So if it was um, a zero argument, automatically it would just say it's less than uh, that, it would call the usage. Um, so this F a statement, F else, uh, then uh, else, that one is basically comparing all the condition that is matching. And then when I'm outside, I get out and then I print out uh, what was uh, feasible on the global area of the program at the end, and then I'm done with all, uh, all of it. So let me just give you, um, like for example, uh, example of the script that it, the script works. Like if I just don't give any argument, it clears the screen and then does it. Now I just run the same script, say test. And then and since I gave one argument, my argument one was test, and then my add array is pointing to this uh, array list, but there's no more, so it's only printing test. And then in this example, I'm arg1 is locally set to 100. You notice? And then um, outside, it comes back, the arg1 is back to 100, uh, 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 back to test. Or uh, arg1, I'm not printing it here. Because uh, even if I print, yeah, I do actually. You printed it's uh, um, back to global area, which is a one. Uh, I mean test. So if I just say Wahid testing uh, this, doesn't matter what I put the argument. Those will be um, calling the multi-line uh, functions. Here it is all those uh, three argument, and then here is just all those three argument. But inside the local argument the arc one is equal to 200. Okay, and then um, if I just do this, if I just gave a star, because a, a, a star means wildcard, and Unix, whenever you just say a star, that means everything. So dollar sign pound is also, the uh, dollar sign at and dollar sign a star is pointing to the same place, and a star, means like this, if I just do a list a star, notice that all my uh, uh, scripts that are here are just uh, listed. So if I do a list minus L a star, the same thing as a list minus L, or a list uh, is the same as a list star, right? So, but notice that a list star is also looking at the directory inside the back, uh, if I have more files, it will list them. So I could do the, uh, something like this in terms of uh, this, and instead of just giving that many arguments, I could just say this. Now it's gonna just take each one of my script name as an argument to it. See that? Now, now watch what happened. Because I provided um, more than one argument by just giving this a star. It reads all the uh, for, uh, variable that was inside here. And one of them, um, for example, 
it is back, fun, all those uh, functions. It, it print out those ones, but then on the multi arcs, it is still going to say arc one is equal 200. Okay, right here, arc one is equal 200 because I define inside the local variable uh, arg1 inside that multi arc functions to 200. So that's the difference between local variable and global variable. So if I just say touch this, and then I run the same star command, now it's gonna be, this is also gonna be in the list. Uh, because uh, right here, see? This is also on somewhere on the top list. But the value of local variable on the uh, arg1 is always 200 inside that function. Uh, outside of that function, it's always whatever I passed on. So here you see that two, uh, this right here, and then on top, of course, it's uh, there too, somewhere there. Yeah, right here. And then um, inside that one or, uh, multi arc function, the value of um, the value of um, org one is equal two hundred, but once I'm out of that the scope of that function, back to the global area, that org one is equal whatever I passed on. In this case, since it matches my first argument, back will be printed as org one. So if I just give this one and say uh, fifty five and this. Not, notice 55 will be the last argument that is going to be printed because dollar sign one is uh, that one. And then um, inside that uh, multi arg is still uh, 200. If I do it with one argument, say just 55, this is gonna be 100 because I'm inside one uh, arg, not multi arg functions. I hope that is clear I think I covered enough for that one. So I'm gonna just uh, show you another script that's called ENV, very small script, uh, my ENV. So my, let me see more, my ENV, that'll search. Yeah, look at this, it's only one line command. So whether I type in ENV here or my ENV, it is that my ENV dot search, it is the same. It prints out the environment. So I was telling you earlier, print env, um, env, or the same command. Set is also uh, showing you all the global variable, local variable, everything that is set is there. So the, the way set works, um, there's set and unset. There's a set env and set env. Um, there's a uh, export command also. So let me show you an example of set. First, first let's say I say x is equal five, and then I say x dollar sign x. Now I print out. At this time, I'm gonna say um, and set x. Now if I just say um, echo dollar sign x, it does not have any value because I just unset it. So, um, that's uh, theirs. Uh, if I'm on inside C shell, I could say set env uh, x is equal five. Notice that uh, inside the C shell, I went to C shell, my prompt changed. And if I do echo dollar sign, dollar sign, I'm inside the C shell. Uh, how do I know that one? Inside my bash, my bash was the ma main process, and then uh, C shell was a sub shell that I opened. And that process ID is the same as my C shell. So uh, dollar sign, dollar sign. If I just say unset env x, now I just say echo dollar sign x, it's not set. Okay, so then um, I go back out of this one. Okay, uh, also the, remember I was telling you that um, there are certain variables that you have to set whenever you're using VI editorial term. Sometimes if you're on an X window session and you're coming in and there, you might have to set the environment in order to be able to edit a file properly. Sometimes you get a lot of garbage on the terminal and then you have to set these variables. So if you're on C shell, you do a set env 
term VT100. Uh, set, set ENV visual VI. Set ENV uh, editor VI. These three are the most important one, aside from display and other ones, that every time you go inside VI or Emacs or something, if you uh, cannot edit the file properly, that means your terminal or, or not VT100 or your visual is not VI and or editorial. And then you set it, then you just VI a file, let's say test.txt, and then you have fine, everything is fine, and you just come back, quit out of that one, you come back. So now I'm gonna exit out of this, I'm inside the bash, equal dollar sign bash, um, sorry, dollar sign, dollar sign. You can see uh, it's my process ID of bash, Remember that get env uh, password and then double look for pass pass uh, word pass wd no, I'm sorry pass wd and then password and then double look for so uh, it, uh, by default my ben bash is my shell that I'm using so I'm gonna just do uh, run some commands. Here, if I just say x is equal five, and then I say export x, that would do it, and like similar to what I, on, I do it on uh, Seashell. But I could do it, uh, both of that command, one in one command, export x is equal 10, and then echo dollar sign x. I just changed it from five to 10. So when you're defining a variable in a, um, bash, you can use in one syntax, export x is equal 10. On the seashell, it was set the NV, x is e uh, not equal, x and then a space 10. That's the syntax. So in this case, if I wanna set my export term, visual everything, I could do like this term. It has to be an uppercase term is equal VT100. And if I wanna do all of them in one line, I could do this, um, VI, and then ex um, export editor VI. So now I set up all, all three, but somewhere I um, wrote export uh, wrong. Uh, let me just correct that. Let me um, go back again. Export term is equal VT100. Export editor is equal VI. And semicolon, export visual is equal VI. Now um, say ENV, and then if I just wanna say grep editor, um, let's say I just want to see both of them. I could just say VI, whatever other one besides visual and editor was set, it will list them. In this case, a lot of things are using the word VI. Like right here is that uh, symbol match and then these three and match. So if I'm just interested in those ones, E and V, and then uh, I want to see only those three, I could use E grep, okay? I could say e grep, and then I put uh, vi. Okay, um, since since the word is um, I I don't want this avi. I could say is equal vi, or uh, visual, or I could just put the word editor editor pipe uh, visual pipe term those three and that those three now this uh, color term and then um, these other ones are there so i could just say i'm only interested in the word dash w and those three are the one that i want to do so notice how flexible unix is in terms of what you want and how you pick up certain things it's so easy in life you could make it like for example, now if I, you wanna just get the 
editorial uh, and then equal value and change it. Uh, I'll show you a trick that I did for this other script. Let me see if the script is here. Um, no, actually the script is uh, in my uh, website. Let me just uh, post, uh, show you that one. So, um, I'm gonna go back to the um, session here. And since we already discussed this one, let me close this. Um, okay, I'm gonna close this one and okay. Go back here, make it maximum. Next one, let's see what we have on the topics that we could cover. Bash script using and the scope of function. Actually, we went through global and local. So you know uh, when you're inside the uh, function, the scope of them are only defined with the function. As long as you pass the same dollar sign one argument to the function and you did not use the word local, that would be global. This regard to whether you're inside the function or outside of the function. But if you're in the scope of a function and you wanna just the variable to be lost after you exit out of the function, then you have to define the local in front of the variable declaration. That's very, very important. Uh, with the scope. So we went through a number of example. You know that one already. Let me see what other things I put on the topic. Um, bash scripting, how to call a function. Okay, calling a function is important. And remember when we uh, call in the usage function or one argument or two arguments? One thing that I was not showing you maybe as an example, the usage function, you just gave the name of the function. Like you say, if dollar sign uh, pound is less than the number of arguments, then just call a usage function. And then it will just call that function. But if it's more than one function, uh, more than one argument, uh, uh, you're not putting it within the parentheses of the function like other programming language you do. In bash scripting, you basically gave the name of the function followed by the argument one, argument two, and uh, argument three and so on, followed by spaces. And that separated by spaces. That's all that matters. So I'm going to show you on an example here. Um, there's a, a function called usage. Usage, I wrote this one to just uh, demonstrate only one function when it's argument or passed. So uh, as you can see, this script, the way it does, it does the shebang and uh, Ben Bash. Why I put it Ben Bash? If I do which Bash, is gonna show me the path to bash. So this line is gonna find my bash interpreter, then every line that I uh, put here, it has to adhere the syntax of bash interpreter. And then if it is correct syntax, it would work. Well, the first line, it says some comments, what this usage function is. Then I have function usage. This is a function, if I don't call it again, it will not be, um, just uh, as if it's not defined, but it is defined there, so I can call it. If I don't give any argument to the function, that means this is, I'm just calling this usage function. And it's gonna, at this time, if I say a number of arguments less than one, if no argument was given, then this function jumps back here and clears the screen and does the um, uh, usage, all of these, uh, and then exits out then it's gonna, it's important to exit out. Otherwise, uh, you don't want the user to just, you know, not be able to enter anything after because it locks up on him uh, on waiting for something else that they don't know what they're doing. So at this time, it gives a usage. But if the number of arguments was passed, remember I was telling you that dollar sign uh, star and dollar sign at is the same thing. So in this case, I'm just, uh, if more than one argument was passed or one argument at least was passed, 
then I'm going to print that arguments. So dollar sign uh, star in this case is going to print it. So if I say usage dollar search, um, again, uh, usage dollar search has to be executable. We already talked about previously. So in this case, the owner is W Lutfi. The W Lutfi has read the write execute permissions. The group is also W Lutfi. The W Lutfi also the group W Lutfi has read and execute. This dash means the group cannot write to it. And then everybody else but a user ID and group ID matching that is considered as everybody else. Uh, developers, anybody on the system, including root. So uh, uh, everybody has a read, uh, no write, no execution. Remember I said including root, but root has higher privilege than this user. So this regard to even if I put dashes here, anything for the others, root could still do whatever they want to do with this file because root has um, uh, permissions of zero uh, ID and group ID of zero. So if I look at this one, uh, password, uh, this is the UID of uh, uh, root, which is zero group ID. Of, that is a unique UID group ID with the highest privilege for root and saying that no matter who gave me what permission, if I become root, I could do whatever I want. And the way you could do root is you do su dash root, so it's user dash root, and then you provide the password to uh, uh, root. Or uh, sudo, if you're on the sudo or list, and then uh, you could do sudo su dash, so it's user to root. You could do that, those two commands to do it. At this time, I'm just showing you that this permission or set executable. If let's say the permission of this one was 644 by default every script that uh, you create uh, usage dot the search um, usage dot the search i remember i was telling you that by default it looks at your u mask so since the u mask is zero uh, two two the first time that i uh, create the script it is a six minus a zero is a read right and then um uh, for the uh, in dash for the first one is six, uh, and then the next one is four because um, six minus two is four, so R is readable, and then and this is also for other people readable. So in this case, I'm going to change the uh, permission. I could do uh, seven five five usage dot sh, and that would show usage dot sh to back to 77 or if i just say uh change it to 644 now let's say i want to change mode to uh plus x usage dot sh that's plus x uh, x means whatever was on this current one add an x with it make it executable for everybody else so that's similar to 755 not this that uh, since I already had read write execute for everybody, uh, I mean uh, read access for everybody and read write for the owner, I only added the x there. So usage dot search has x. Now if I run it, usage dot search is gonna just say I, I need some argument. Now I'm gonna just say arc one. It just says oh you're uh, entered arc one. Dollar sign star is gonna point to that. Say or two, and so on. So if I just change this one to numbers, one, two, three, four, whatever, um, three, four, five, whatever number I put, it's gonna just print out those ones. It doesn't matter what I put in. And then at this time, if I just say star, whatever number of files here on this directory is gonna do the same thing. So remember this star means everything. Now I'm gonna just get the output like similar to what I got before. So coming back to uh, the uh, example here, bash is scripting using functions, how to make calls, basically pass arguments separated by a space. And if you use the asterisk, it means everything that's on that directory, 
uh, it will just pass on. And then if you just don't give any argument, is there a dollar sign pound is gonna just uh, go to the next one. So let me see what we have next. Uh, how to pass argument to a function. We just uh, uh, discussed that one because argument calls and function calls is the same. Um, bash scripting using functions. So and this is the fun global ar argument. This is one I printed out in case a few guys are having problem accessing the video. This is a duplicate of the same information that I had on the PDF files. If you don't have access to a, a, a PDF uh, reader or something, you can also see the access of this file. And you can cut and paste it from here uh, on your um, uh, Unix uh, uh, virtual box that you're using or any way that you're uh, connecting to a Unix machine, then you can practice these ones and modify it and play around with it. So at the lab activity, I'm hoping that you guys are practicing these ones. Uh, as a practice exercise and find out um, all the answers to your question. Because um, at some point we're not discussing question and the detail that we were doing back and forth and before. Although you could always raise your hand and uh, if you ha are uh, available, I'm, I'm available, we can just do that one. But since the class is not expected to be synchronous, uh, then it's much easier to have it here. So this is a good example so that we went through. Open shell script examples and a new window. So this is uh, going to my website. And then on the website, I wrote chapter five uh, both using uh, Unix shell scripting and um, my uh, C shell with C shell and Bash. This example is with um, C shell, the for each statement. Um, it might just um, not come up here um, because of um, the internet is really slow connecting there. You can see, but if I switch my internet to the other one, I don't want to switch it now because I'm in the middle of the session. So I'm going to sh uh, show you this as an example of this. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it eventually comes up. That's a good thing. Uh, so this is the shell script uh, that does that. And um, there's also like a, a, a cat command of the same script that I'm showing and then here I'm showing the output, like uh, if you run it, what output you get. Um, so uh, I would demonstrate this one also. Let's see if um, this one is a little bit slow compared to what it should have been. Okay, somebody is joining James Young. Mm -hmm. Okay, reload. Um, aside from that one, I could just do this. Um, so SSH minus LW, let's see, um, our unix.com. Let's see if I log in and show you as an example of My Solaris. So I um, used uh, something called SSH, Secure Shell, to go to my Mac machine uh, that's running that website. And from there, I uh, log into my virtual box, which is my Solaris machine. And then inside here, now I'm on the Solaris machine. Uh, if I just clear my screen and do uname minus A, you see that I'm on the Solaris machine 5.11.
And here, that's the website or server. It's called HTTP Apache. Apache 2.2 is running. So I'm gonna demo uh, some of the examples here for Apache 2.2. Let's see. Um, so in this case was um, CGI bin. No. Okay, so the script that I'm showing you here, let me uh, set my terminal. You see that uh, PS1 is uh, pointing to a big long uh, this. It shows the name of the host and the path and everything. Uh, that's too much uh, here for teaching. I'm gonna change that one to PS1 is equal just a dollar sign and then a space. Okay, so, sorry. Um, right here, I'm still sitting on that machine and I'm still seeing that directory there, but um, it's much easier now to just say, show me all the C shell script, all the files with uh, other ones. So let me just give you for the first script that I was run, uh, showing you there for each dot C shell. And this is script, um, which I wrote long time ago, and it's still good. It just basically uh, uses C shell in this case instead of bash. And then there's other bash script. I'm going to show you those examples as well. And on this ex uh, script, I'm just basically printing a list of all the sports here. And then uh, so uh, you use a for each. This for each syntax is similar to Perl or um, Python and other programming languages that they use the word uh, for each. Perl is very specific, uh, similar to this uh, work, um, works like this. So for each and then a sports, and then you use an array of list. In this case, uh, the array contains soccer, football, swimming, running, basketball, handball, tennis, volleyball. And then it has to print those ones. Then, um, the syntax of C uh, language, if you use a for each, you don't have a do and done, you don't have a begin and an end, but you have an end statement. Uh, and then uh, you just finish it. Uh, then this other one, print a list of characters. Notice that uh, the CH in this case, it could be A through D, let's say, uh, through E, or a, B, uh, through E, and lowercase or uppercase, first one, and lowercase, second one, and then numbers, third one. So it's going to print out those uh, very, uh, numbers or characters based on uh, what I want to print. And then in this case, I'm co uh, combination printing uh, using for each statement, uh, using a string, and then floating point numbers. So if I just do um, for each dot C shell, uh, since I'm defining it on my uh, for each statement, the C shell, on the first line, if I say head one, it, uh, it minus one, then it's gonna say it's a C shell. Since I did a C shell, I could uh, do a dot for each the C shell, it will still execute it. And notice that it uh, does uh, for floating point number, for the rest. Um, so the next example on the seashell is a F statement, F dot seashell. This one, I'm uh, doing a comparison at some point. If a sport is soccer, then I love playing sports, uh, dollar sign sport, then the playing soccer will be uh, printed. Notice the F statement, and instead of the uh, bash having a bracket, or double uh, quote and double parentheses. In this case, is this is much like C language. That's why um, the programming uh, uh, the shell script is called a C C shell, which is similar to C. But unfortunately, they don't use braces and they don't close the braces. They use the syntax of then and def. So it is more uh, kind of combined of bash and the C shell and and its own way of uh, the uh, person that who wrote it. 
Um, and then it uh, uses and for that for statement, the for each. Actually, this for each is already there. Uh, where is that end? Uh, that might be a typo there. Let me see if why is has there. Yeah, for for character and this. Yeah, actually, yeah, uh, this one has a, a end here. Maybe uh, it is coming from one of the. Uh, let me see, vif dot c shell. So for each, and then there's end already here. Okay, maybe that end was like ending before it prints it. And dollar sign is port. Yeah, this this uh, terminated before that one. It should have been here. Let me see. Um, and if yeah, this is okay. So that one of them is terminated before that. And if and then and. Um, quit. Let's see, f dot uh, c shell. It does uh, run, but notice that they give you an end here. Uh, for each. Oh, no, and that was uh, output of this. This is my syntax. Yeah, this end not found. You see that? So we did see that uh, as a typo. vi uh, f dot c shell end. This one is okay. This one is extra. Um, we could just comment this one out, and then that way the f statement should work. Because if that is the case, then then this one is done. Let me see what's going on here. Oh, so now the file is read only because I have to log in as root because uh, I made the permissions of them differently. Um, F dot C shell, so nobody could uh, modify it. Uh, so let me just do that. sudo su dash. Okay, now my uh, PWD is different. So I'm gonna go back to uh, var Apache 2, 2.2, 2 CGI bin and loop, and then uh vi f dot c shell and then end just put that end there the next one was okay f dot c shell so can even not found this was the reason that i put that end it understood that one so um vi f dot c shell this one is okay. This one is commented out. Now, F C shell, it runs, did it say soccer? Let me see if it does direct uh, minus I soccer. You have a new software, okay. So I'm gonna do f dot c shell and move this line behind this line because um, the f statement has to be part of this function to say that a sport is soccer, then it does it. Even not found. Ah, it is um, complaining with that column, uh, VI soccer uh, code. So. And, and uh, the reason is this one is not having two columns. And that is when you're doing um, 
condition checking, yeah, the syntax is two, uh, two of them, like I did here. Um, this is one to do that or that, but this is Boolean matching. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, it worked here too. So if it is equal that, and then the first one is uh, fruit. If a sport is equal to that. I'm going to uh, run it like this. It might fail. No, actually it didn't. That was the problem. So in this case, um, if you just do it like that, it's going to work. And um, the syntax was that, um, let me try this uh, f dot c shell. And that's whether the uh, two bracket fixed it or the bank. The bank sometimes, and um, um, it might just say this bank pound is not understood as it looks like as if it is uh, an event. Yeah, that, that was the bank. So I could have just, um, get rid of that, that bang and seashell if you're falling after with a coat it is um, uh, a problem so i'm gonna do that and i should escape it it should not yeah it should not be there so the f fact that whether i use double code or single code double code if it was more than one condition that may you know, like this i uh, use more um, boolean conditions if this condition is true or that one is this is or or that condition is true or this other condition is true any of those condition so i used a boolean operator to say this one would be returning uh, let's say one or this one one or this one whichever one return one this uh, statement will be true and then um because it's a or statement so the fact that I did the first line and uh, put that uh, um, uh, escape in front of the bang, it works. Uh, that's why it's going to come. And then if I look at the I love soccer grip minus I love soccer, it's there. I love playing soccer. Uh, and then the bang symbol is there. So that was the reason for the event. Uh, F dot C shell. Now I don't need this pound in front of this at all. Um, okay. And then let's go through a, a, for a few more examples of F statement. Um, so this one is a F arguments uh, dot a search. Um, it's on uh, bash, I believe f dash args dollar search uh, this one it uh, says uh, get the value one and two if the two arguments are given um, then uh, just run the output and otherwise if there's not given uh, don't do the usage if it, the argument is not passed properly give him a usage if it is passed properly with two arguments then uh, do the comparison of those two values value on one uh, or whether the values are the same or value equal in this example i want you to pay attention to this regular expression a variable that i uh, created i wanted to just look uh, to make sure that only a number could be entered as a argument if somebody uh, writes um, for dollar sign one a uh, string uh, then, then I'm going to just say, I'm not going to run it. Uh, right here is that validation is going to uh, be checking for the condition. So this else part, it says if else, if not, this a bang means not, uh, this condition, or if not this condition, meaning that if dollar sign one is matching uh, this, um, Equal sign tilde means if this uh, uh, variable is matching that uh, variable. If this is the same, and then uh, this not is making negating it like De Morgan's law. 
is negation of that. If this is not the case, or that's not the case, if it's not a number, then either the dollar sign one is not a number, or dollar sign two is not a number, then give it, say, this program only requires argument. Uh, so uh, the name of the script was um, F orgs. So if I just give it by itself, and then say, okay, this is the syntax, how you should run this script. It says a script name and then number. So if I just give it one argument, like 10, it's gonna complain, say, I want more than one argument. But if I say five, it's gonna say, um, okay, 10 is greater than five. But what if uh, I give 55? Doesn't matter that I have to give those two number, right? I could give 100 and uh, it's still, because the argument that I'm passing is I'm passing to dollar sign one and dollar sign two. So it, as many argument as, as I do, if I'm, I'm putting a third argument here, the system doesn't know about it. All it does is compare the first two arguments. It ignores the rest of them because I'm not reading the number of arguments that are passed. I'm only interested on uh, two arguments. So if I just say one and two, it's there, but if I say one and one, then it says equal. And if I say two and one, then uh, two is greater than one. So the first argument is compared again, the second argument. If the first argument is equal to, let's say five and five, it will say, but the first argument is 15, then obviously it says greater. If uh, uh, the second argument is 25, then it says 15 is a smaller than. So it is the first argument compared to the second argument. And then as soon as they match it, the same number, then it's gonna not complain, say they're equal. But what if I just gave a different uh, argument on one of them? Remember I was doing a condition Boolean operator, whether dollar sign one is not an argument or dollar sign two. And then it should say that this program only requires an argument. Please enter number only. So if I just to say only a T or only a A, doesn't matter, or only a Z, whatever I put, it doesn't matter. As long as I gave it one argument to uh, a character, it's gonna say, I'm not gonna take it. If I put uh, both of them, obviously it's not gonna take it. Because that Boolean or F dash args dot search. Uh, is going to check um, for either one of them. Either this one is uh, not the case or that one is not the case. If it is not matching any of those ones, then uh, give that uh, please enter number only. So how did I know that this was only uh, accepting a regular expression as uh, accepting a number? This is the syntax. So I'm saying that when the user dollar sign one is passed, dollar sign one or dollar sign two, I'm gonna compare them, but dollar sign one uh, could be anything, but a regular expression is always the same. I'm just saying that my dollar sign um, zero through nine, when meaning any number, and I'm sorry, uh, that um, um, core which is this symbol, it's called ANCORE. The ANCORE, it means start with. And then after the first uh, character could be any digit, zero through nine, zero through nine. And then this uh, range, uh, which is the bracket, it says meaning that it could be zero, one, two, three through nine. And then this plus symbols means z uh, one or more of that digit. So if it is, I only put a zero there, like here, I only put a zero, zero and zero, then and, uh, this one automatically matches, those two numbers are equal, and it's gonna say they are equal. If I just put 100 digit, this plus, meaning that if it was, the first one would be uh, one coming out of this. This is for our dollar sign argument two. Uh, on dollar sign arc one, this would be the, just the zero. And then this one is no uh, absence of everything else. 
Then after that one, it says, oh, there's a second digit for dollar sign two. Then it's gonna just put zero through nine, whatever number that person pass. And if I just do another one and nine here, it's gonna just keep doing it till it, it sees the end of line, which is after I press enter. Then it's gonna say, well, uh, zero is smaller than, it's gonna do the comparison. So this regular expression, if I wanted to uh, match only strings, I could do uh, start with uh, some uh, this and end with dollar sign, and then this symbols means zero or more characters. And instead of putting zero through nine, I could put like this: a regular expression is equal, and then um, start the uh, single quote, and then back tick, back tick. In this case, I'm accepting lowercase a through z, as well as uppercase through a through z, as well as zero through nine. Let's say all numbers, everything. But in, uh, in the case of a regular expression matching uh, a string or character only, that's, that's how I want to do it. Then I'm putting a plus, meaning uh, more than one uh, character character one, character two, character three, as many as it has, understand it. Until you see a dollar sign, then you go there. So then if I just say, like for example, let's say F, test equal, and dollar sign regular expression and then 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 echo okay else echo not okay if i see it this is not okay because that regular expression that i gave it did not match uh with those ones because i say it could be uh, this or uppercase. If I just say my regular expression, let's say to this, and then run the same syntax, uh, it still says not okay. Um, why is that? Because echo dollar sign regular expression. Okay, it is matching uh, something that is uh, there with those uh, variable but I, I did not give any uh, value to it uh, so th that is not exactly the same as uh, that um, uh, interpreting it interpreting it so in this case if I just do um, change my regular expression here to match uh, the same symbol which is in the script, but we'll do the interpretation. Uh, let's say do um, back tick and then A through Z and plus dollar sign, then it says not okay. Um, regular expression and Yeah, so in the first uh, case, when you're comparing it, if you're comparing it to a string, you're using the right symbol for comparison, but I was not putting this one within quotes. So it just did not understand that this uh, string was matching that string. Here I was matching it with the uh, double quote. So if I was doing that, maybe I could do this here and, and let's see if that is still, uh, still that's not the same in terms of a string matching. So it, it's good to put them within the code. Yeah, within the code is better. So if you, because all those ones you say they call okay, 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 for each one of them because of uh, that condition. So within the code would definitely give you the right proper way to do it. Um, I'll show you an example of uh, um, that one. More test of search. Okay, more.
Um, so this one, uh, else FS statement, it does a, a FS statement with else and then uh, other condition based on the value that are passed to dollar sign one, dollar sign two. And this example, I'm also using the numbers. We went through that one, so I'm not gonna cover that one already. Um, but um, basically, if you run it, if you run it, it requires two argument. And once uh, the arguments are uh, given is, uh, let's say 99 and 55, it will just say which one is greater and so on. And if they are uh, smaller, it will say nine is smaller. And what if they are the same? Yeah, equal. So the other script that I'm showing you here, I think it has the a string matching. So let me do grep regular expression, um, start of the search. What other script I'm using regular expression? Okay, so here I'm gonna use that. I'm sorry. I'm gonna do grep. Okay, let me just change my shell first of all. Um, PS1 is equal and dollar sign. Okay. Um, grep minus i regular expression is equal and then start the other search uh, so in this example i'm using the f statement so more f dash statement of the search i'm using the string on this example for regular expression i want to show you that one so if the regular expression this one i'm saying that i'm only accepting uh strings so this is the condition where I'm matching it. Remember on this syntax is the same as I uh, wrote before, but in this example, if I just run this uh, script by itself, and it's gonna say this uh, requires two argument, one and two is still gonna say the same thing. One and 12 is still gonna say, uh, one and test is still gonna say the same thing. But now test and Wahid, well, just compare the two. So if I just, uh, the letter uh, W is matching uh, after, uh, before Z, so Z is greater than, or uh, W is smaller. And then the, the apple and pear, so pear is uh, greater and apple is smaller. And apple and apple should be the same. Uh, a and B, A and B, B is a greater and A is a smaller. And uh, if it doesn't matter which one I put first, it always look at the first one compared to the second one. So B is greater than A. Because on in the syntax of it, it's important for you when you look at the logic, don't just uh, uh, change the, the arguments. If you change the argument, the logic uh, would work differently. Even though syntactically it's uh, still correct, semantically it's not correct. The logic, um, the meaning of that one, when I say semantically, that uh, whatever is the meaning of that logic that you're putting. So in this case, if I just say if dollar sign uh, value one is less than value two, Notice that I'm not using the uh, dash LT, less than. I'm using the less than symbol with a less than uh, kind of symbol. That one or, or this equal sign. Whenever you do comparison of a string, you have to put the variable within the code and you have to use this kind of symbols. So for less than, you use this symbol. For less or equal, uh, you use this symbol. For greater sign, you use this one. And if you use uh, greater or equal, you do that, or uh, equal, equal for equal. So those are uh, the uh, comparison operators. And not equal is when you, uh, the uh, two strings are not equal. That's how you do it. 
and then equal tilde is has a special meaning meaning that assign this uh, string uh, and compare it at the same time so you 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 could maybe put the variable in Perl um, when I was writing all these uh, man pages uh, on the a script i had to uh, get the parameters from um, the output of the man pages and then i had to do a lot of um, uh, parsing on the string because a lot of the garbage that was coming from tr off or um, man or uh, pages it was just uh, extra invisible character that it's only accessible if you go to vi and set it but when you uh, open it on the display, those ones will be like uh, garbage to the user. And so you don't want to just have the user reading all these nonsense. And, and um, you have to uh, convert it to other type of uh, strings. Okay, um, somebody just join in, Eddie. Okay, um, let's see. There's more scripts here that I could cover. Uh, sorry. And um, so for now, I mean, the smaller numbers, F dash is smaller, smaller uh, number. Dot search. The, that's what is going to just compare the two numbers if one is a smaller versus the other one. In this case, I'm automatically um, putting the value to uh, value one and two. This is kind of hard coded. So it, it only checks for five and ten. If you just uh, did that one, if I run it, if uh, smaller number dot search. It always just says five is smaller than number. No matter what I pass in here, uh, it doesn't care. It just says five is small because it's hard coded inside here. Hard coding is not a good example of uh, writing scripts, but there are times in life that you have to uh, set uh, some variables to something initially. Like pi does not change. So you set the pi to 3.14 and then you just uh, execute it and so on. There's a lot of functions, okay? Um, there's another um, thing that um, we discussed um, on the documentation. Let me go here. Yeah, you see that one as I eventually came out and the uh, script. So I'm just showing you here the actual script here. And then if you run it here, it will just say, the same thing. See that it just print out. So if if the internet is accessible, all of these scripts really uh, good. It just give you output everything and then produce the output for it. And it gives you the syntax here that you can read it. Um, but at the same time, I provide you already these scripts from the lecture, so you can just look at it. And then when you have it internet access to the machine, you can see it on the website as well. Um, so let me uh, discuss one more thing here. Uh, sometimes you're writing a script inline a scripting, right? So let me go back here and go to uh, open shell script. We did discuss that already. Okay, this is a function uh, to just uh, double uh, two digit, two, two numbers, right? So this is an inline function. You could just write an inline function to just say whatever the number that uh, the person gave, it's only as simple as this line. It says uh, the name of the function is double, it echoes it, and then um, whatever dollar sign one is passed, I'm multiplying it by two. So like here, when I do type double, it uh, just uh, says the uh, format or the definition of that double function. 
double is a function and here is the definition of it how i define it exactly like here and then uh, sample output if i give uh, five five times two is ten ten times two is twenty hundred times two is two hundred and one times two so you could just do that one a similar power function like here i just do the power function um, i just started here notice that here it is a different syntax uh, two to the power of anything i want to do it is just two to the power of the dollar sign one if dollar sign one is two that would return a four but i'm just piping it to a basic calculator basic calculator says whatever the argument is there uh, two to the power of two this is exponential uh, in bash and uh, Perl, you might start uh, the double asterisk, asterisk meaning uh, exponential, or the power function inside math uh, library. You have to import math modules, and then you do that one. But in uh, Bash, you, whenever you use the anchor, that means power of, two to the power of. So it is just uh, doing that. And um, and here I I think I wrote a couple of. Um, a small a scripts uh, let me exit out of this um, go back to uh, I'm still on Mac Darwin yeah so um, I'm gonna get out of this now I'm back on my Ubuntu okay so inside here remember I was inside the function I told you that I wrote some other uh, function like round or function so this round function round dot search i wrote this one to just uh, say whatever the user provides i will uh, round it off to um uh print out um a result as a result of rounding it to the nearest number right so if, if the person says round dot search by itself it says i need an argument but if i say 5.3 that should be rounded back to five because any number less than 5.5 like 5.4, 5.3, anything is going to just do the same thing. See, 5.1, 5.4, uh, and so on. But as soon as I give it 5.5, it will round it to the 6. 5.6 uh, is rounded 6. 7, 8, 9, and then you get the idea. So now if I just say, what if I just say 0, 1? It's still going to be due. So zero two and zero nine is still going to just say five because I'm only uh, in this function. I'm only worried about um, one argument. Let me show you what, around the other search. Um, right here, I'm saying that um, whatever the float point that it's giving me, uh, I uh, get it from dollar sign one. Then now I'm going to parse it. Uh, and uh, from the dot, the first field, I'm going to put it into number. The second field, I'm going to put it into a floating point. But if I just worry about only the first uh, column of it, then I don't care. The rest of the column could be anything. This cat minus C character one is going to just take the first argument after the dot, and then that's going to find it. If I change that one, let's say, I, I change that one to uh, say this, and then I take this um, cut command out. Now my script is working differently, depending on how many arguments I pass. Right here, if I pass this, it doesn't, as uh, it says, okay, let me just uh, correct something. Line 24, it failed. So let me see why it failed on line 24. Yeah, the zero is not understood somehow value two greater for base error and this one that's zero nine so if i just um uh, do any digit after this it doesn't matter it's going to round it off to a six that's not right I, I if i do nine that makes sense if i do nine one it makes sense the six but what is uh anything below five five uh, doesn't matter it's gonna still go to six so in this case i want to just um 
that that uh, error that was saying value too great for a base error token zero nine, because uh, when it is looking at the floating point numbers, the zero nine it, at this time is not understood by the system to uh, do it because I didn't uh, do any uh, validation on that one. So let me just take that line back and put this one out. And this time I'm just only uh, concerned with the first digit. So if I just say zero 09 here, it will work because all it is is I'm just saying whatever the first digit, only worry about that one. Zero some uh, large number to the system, it doesn't know what is that number. Uh, zero one uh, zero to the left doesn't mean anything. That's why I was giving that error. Okay. Um, so it's eight twelve, and we haven't taken any break. And then I've been talking continuously. Um, let me stop at this time the um, uh, screen sharing and see if you guys have any question for those of you that are still here. And um, um, so I'm gonna just um, stop recording so we can save this one. Sometimes if it's too long, some of the uh, screen sharing and other ones are uh, being lost. Uh, last time I had a long of uh, things and somehow the screen sharing um, only had the audio at the end. So let me just stop this.